in this video, I'll be introducing many important apologies that I didn't discuss before, or they wouldn't be long enough to make their own video. So the first one I'd like to introduce are the trivial and the discrete topologies. These are very easy topologies that I think I forgot to mention. So if I'm given a set X, the discrete topology on it is just going to be the power set of X. And then the trivial topology is just going to be the set of the empty set and the entire set itself. You can check that both of those follow the axioms and they're both pretty trivial. Now something else I forgot to mention in previous uh, videos is the subspace topology. If I have y, a subspace of x, then I can define a topology I'll call ty and it's going to be the set of u intercept y for u, an element of the topology on x. So it's the collection of open sets in X intersect Y. So if I have a space Y right here and the entire space is X, then an open set is in Y, say this is an open set in X, then the open space in Y is just that part. So you can see that the topology is different because if Y has boundaries, now the open sets have boundaries. It gives you a sort of weird topology. But if Y is open, then every open set in Y is also open in X due to the fact that the finite intersection of open sets is open. So U intersect Y would still be open. All right, some very strange topologies are going to be new ones on the real numbers that give different structures. So let's take the new topology in R, which I'll call RL or R lower, and the topology I'll call TL is going to be generated by the basis, which is the collection of closed at the bottom and open at the top sets. This is for A and B, an element of R. So it's actually a very different structure, and you might be surprised, but just adding in a single point to the set, you get very different properties. And another topology on R is usually called RK, I'll call it TK and it's going to be generated by the basis, which is the set of open intervals, a, b, as well as open intervals, a, b, removing a special set. All right, now I'll define what that special set is right now. The special set is the set of one over n for every n an element of the natural numbers. So if I'm on the real line, the L topology is where I take lower bounds like this. But the K topology, it'll still be normal. However, I can remove just one over the integers. So say this is zero right here. There's going to be a series of one over integers that I can remove that just slowly approach zero. So it'll be like that. Now for both of these topologies, the standard topology on R is going to be a subset of them. So it's a subset of the topology L and the topology K. It should be the L topology and the K topology, but I don't know, I'm just calling it that. This will be left as a proof for you to do. You just use the same method I used in my metric space video. Now, the thing is, is that the topology on L is not a subset of the topology on K, and the topology on K is not a subset of the topology on L. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a name for two topologies on the same set that really just aren't subsets of each other? Well, we call these incomparable. And we call topologies where they are larger, or they have more sets in them, we call these finer. 
So I'd say that the L topology is finer, or the lower bound topology is finer than the standard topology, and that the K topology is finer than the standard topology. And then the other way around is called coarser. This might seem a little backwards, but the way you should think about it is that finer means that you can get smaller sets. All right, so you can get smaller and smaller sets, so it's more fine. And coarser means that the sets are larger and there are less of them. And uncomparable, of course, just means <laughs> they can't be compared. Now I'm going to extend on my ordered topology video now. If I have in uh, two order spaces, let's say x under less than and y under less than prime. That's a weird notation, but I'm, I'm using it. All right, then we define a new order on x cross y. I'll call it less than bar, but that's, that's just completely arbitrary. So the way we define it is we say that the pair x, y is less than bar the pair a, b if and only if x is less than a or that x is going to be equal to a and y is less than prime b. Let's take the space x cross y and let's just pick two points. This one is less than this one because this one's x component is less than this one's x component. However, if I had two points who had the same x component, then one is less than the other if their y component is less than the other. This one is less than this one because this one's y component is less than that one's y component. And now the topology on this is taking open sets of these forms. So let's take the open set from this point to that point. So we start here and we go down all of the points that is less than it, which is, of course, all of these points because they have a lower y component and the same x component. And then, of course, all of these points as well. So all of those points are also less than this point because their x components are less than it. And then all the way, and then I keep doing all those lines all the way down until I get to this point where I have to stop and then do my other end. All right, so we just fill in a box or a sort of pseudo box, I guess, like this. And this is an open set in the dictionary topology, which is very interesting, especially when you're looking at the order topology on R cross R, which is what uh, this is visualizing right now, but do that. Because it's a very different topology than the standard product topology, very obviously. And uh, it actually has some nice analysis that we'll go into later. So I'll save the analysis of this topology for a little later. Right now, let me introduce a another new topology. It's the line with two origins. I take R, so I take my line. And what I do is I remove zero. So I just remove the zero point. And then what I'll do is I'll union in two new points, P and Q, that will take the place of zero. So I have P there and I have Q there. Now we define a topology on this by just saying that if I have an open set U of R and I have it that zero is an element of U, then instead of just leaving U like that, I'll just do u, remove 0, and then union either p or q, but not both. So when I have an open set, say this one, I have to decide when I reach 0, should I go up to p and then keep going, or down to q. So I just replace zero with either P or Q, and this, it's, the or, it's the line with two origins. Now, if you remember my order topology video, you'd remember a property I called Hausdorff. Let's give the definition of Hausdorff first. 
If you remember my order topology video, I introduced this concept with the order topology. Basically what it says is that for any two points, P and Q, an element of X, that are not equal to each other, so P is not equal to Q, there exists two open sets, U and V, of X, such that P is an element of U, Q is an element of V, and they are disjoint, so U intersect V is empty. This is actually very important for analyzing the structure of topologies. So what it says is that I have a point and I have a distinct point. I can find two intervals around these points that do not intersect. So this is actually a very important topological property. Hausdorff is one of the most important topological properties you can have. The line with two origins doesn't have the Hausdorff property. Now this is because I have my line, I remove the point zero, and I take any open set around it that contains zero. The thing is, is that no matter what, there will be a little bit to the left of zero and a little bit to the right of zero just very close to zero, no matter what. And so when I take any open set around zero, and I take any other open set around zero, take that one, they will intersect somewhere that isn't zero. This is the nature of open sets. If I have two open sets around a single point, they will intersect at a point that isn't that point. And so when I just add in two new points, P and Q, then these are distinct points, and also, because they just replace zero in their structure, no matter what open sets I take around them, they will intersect at a point that isn't zero, i.e. they will intersect in this topology. And this is due to the fact that this topology is generated by a basis using open intervals. And so, it's going to be a union of open intervals, it's going to be an open interval around zero, and then the open interval around zero has that property. And so the line with two origins is a counterexample to the Hausdorff property of topological spaces. And so you can see that even though Hausdorff is a property we want, although I haven't really discussed it much, it isn't necessarily true even on the real numbers or a uh, real number like system and that's it